How's it going, everyone? And welcome into yet another episode of Debate Night. I'm your host for this week, Hunter. Trevor's out. So I'll be your host probably for the next few weeks. Um, but we're joined tonight by a great cast of people. We're going we're gonna to start it off with Brody on the course, Smith, right now. What's, what's going on, Brody? Wait, how are there multiple Brodies? Oh, what's happening? I didn't see that on the sheet. There's two Brodies. There's two Let's Brodies go. right now. <laughs> Was this a late What's on here? No, no. He's supposed to be on here. Oh, all right. What's up, man? Nice to meet you. <laughs> nice to meet you, too. <laughs> We're also joined by Dustin. Hey, everybody. Excited to be back for season two or another season. And uh, looking forward to tonight. It's going to be a lot of fun. We have uh, Steven with some daylight. It's not 4 a.m. in California when we're filming this for once. Let's go, baby. Daylight is here. I am ready. Three-time champ, baby. Let's go. There you go. And finally joining us, the alter alter ego, Other Brody, for the first time. What's going on? I'm happy to be here. Uh, I think I got some things to prove, so let's get after it. Let's go. Uh, Brody just threw his approach shot on <laughs> what I'm guessing is hole 18. <laughs> <laughs> How was the shot, Brody? Was that a good? All right. Well, um, what could go wrong here? Let's just start it with the first topic. <laughs> oh man. Wait, can I can I defend myself to the people? You can. You know what? I'll give you I'll give I'll give you a minute and a half. Go ahead. This is your floor to defend yourself. Okay. So we are currently filming our practice round. We got Ezra and <laughs> and um, uh, it was going to be perfect timing, but. I really have a hard time understanding why rental cars, like, why does it take, like, I can go through and get a four by four biggie bag at Wendy's in two and a half minutes, but it takes 15 to 20 minutes to rent a car. I don't understand why it takes so long to rent a car. It seems like it should be a very fast. All my information already. I made a reservation. I should literally be able to walk up and show my ID and then them getting the, the whole thing of like, hold on, I got to figure out what car to get. No, what are we doing? You should already have the car ready for, I don't understand it. So I'm fine for an hour. I think we all heard about all half sad. of that, but uh, yeah, we will say Brody was in car, waiting for a car for an hour is what I learned oh. from that experience well, there. That the uh, live coverage this week is going to be awesome. Then. <laughs> that is true. We're getting a little pre preview of the, the live coverage coverage out there. Um, should be interesting. Uh, so we're just going to go ahead and kick it off with the first topic here. I'm going to change the order. I'm going to make a, a host call to give the Dark Horse as much time. Wait, where the heck is Trevor? He's at home. He's at home. They're <laughs> waiting the arrival of their second child. Hopefully, by the time yeah, the show fair, comes out, uh, a they, fair, he's a father that's a too. Fair thing to wait for. That's fine. So he is at home, and I am your host tonight. Uh, I'll be a dad too. We're gonna, we're gonna, we're gonna bump Brody to the back of the bus for the order. So everyone, just make your mental notes there. Um, that way, we give Brody as much time to get off the course as possible before he has to answer this. We're gonna kick it off with we saw where Brody is last weekend, this past weekend, at the All-Star event, go down uh, for the Disc Golf Pro Tour, the place where the Chess.com Invitational will be happening this upcoming weekend. And the All-Star event was met with kind of, uh, we'll just say, it was mixed results. So it was mixed opinions. We'll just say it that way. So I'm going to give all of y'all the floor. We're going to put it in this context. You wake up tomorrow morning in charge of planning the 2025 All-Star event. What changes are you making Dustin, the floor is yours. All right, I'm going to start with two two words, and I'm going to come back to it. But those two words are energy vampires, okay? So we're going to come back to that in just a minute. But most of the competition I liked. I thought it was a fun event. I thought the layouts were all right. You know, distance competition is always fun to watch. I liked the way the trees were set up and the ability to use some natural boundaries for the skills competition. Putting, some people put on the show and some of the players did really well, but the event itself just was lacking. Now what I would do is I would put some additional targets on maybe the distance competition. If not, AB is just going to win it every year until he doesn't win it anymore because nobody's going to beat him. Uh, we need timers. I'd want to speed everything up, uh, put, put some timers out on the course. So they, they're in a hurry. They're throwing the discs and even on the putting competition, I would take some inspiration from the three point shootout in the NBA 
And I would put racks up there. And you know what? Sponsors can just put some disc up there. Not every putter needs their favorite putter they've been putting with for a long time. Just put some putters up there from their, their brand and let them just have stations, let them have money disc, whatever it is. But the biggest thing they need to change, I would change right now, is get rid of the energy vampires. I like Terry and Miller. I like the whole gang. They do a great job when they call a tournament round. But to put them on an all-star event where you need lots of energy and lots of hype, we need we need banging music. We need lots of energy. We need somebody like Brody and Yuli out there cheering on these guys, interviewing them during the show, just having a good time instead of just like sucking all the energy right out of the event. Very solid point. Very solid point. Oh, Brody <laughs> wants to bring in a rebuttal. Brody, I'm going I'm to let you just hold your rebuttal till it's your turn because for one reason, one reason only, that's because I'm getting one out of every 40 of your frames right now. So I don't think that your rebuttal will come through clear. I hate to put it that way. Um, all right. We're going to give the floor now to Steven. What do you think? Energy vampires? I don't know about energy vampires, but a um, couple of things. First, immediate change is the venue. Uh, budget willing, I think we would be moving the event to a location near the start of the tour, but somewhere with a bit of notoriety and somewhere that's different from where we're going to see people playing the following weekend. Um, two, I'm changing the putting contest. I think it's boring in the layout that it's in. Let's uh, let's set up a tiki course and let's go a mini mini game of putt putt for the for the top putters in the sport. Give them some obstacles to shoot around. Let's make it interesting. Um, same with the skill shot. Let's get let's get funky. Let's let's put up some mozzarella sticks or something. You know, get, let's uh, let let's give them something to really aim for past just a couple of gaps in the trees. Um, and then lastly, and most importantly, I'm getting rid of the team aspect. We are a single competitor sport. Let's let the all-stars shine on their own. And I, I agree with what you said on Griplock. Let's do a nine-hole match play tournament, but let's put it on a course that features 200 to 400 foot holes. Let's see some exciting ace runs. Let's see some exciting shots that the competitors can get creative around. You know, making it a championship level layout where, you know, three, four, five down is, is a good score. I want to see I want to see some eight downs. I want to see some four overs because people are going for aces on every hole. Give me something exciting to, to, to get me pumped for the season. All around fair, fair points there. Uh, Brody, we'll call you Brody R to, to clear things up here. Uh, Brody R, what do you think? All right, before I get some some of the stuff you guys said, I think two big things have to happen. The first one, the most important one, has to be we move the date of the All-Star Weekend. All the major sports we have around the United States, NBA, MLB, NHL, anything like that, if All-Star Weekend happens mid-season and it functions as a break. I think that this will increase the amount of like, energy that is put towards the event. Um, I think people are more invested when you're mid-season and you have things going on. You have a season of storylines and not like up and coming players. And, you know, there's always a player that bursts on the scene every season that we don't see before that. And I would love to see them highlighted during the all-star week when they're having a phenomenal season for the very first time. Like let's see those breakout guys come and then participate in that in season all-star break rather than having it before. I think that you lose a, I think you lose a bit of um, notoriety within an event when it happens outside of um, the season itself. Um, and on top of that, I think uh, we need to spice up big time the distance competition. Distance competition is like uniquely our home run derby, our slam dunk contest. It's the one where you see the big guys come out and throw as far as they can. I think that needs to be accompanied with upgraded production levels. So we're talking lights, speakers. We're bringing the people in closer around the keypad. So you have this aspect of a crowd level there. This increases the amount of hype around it. I think it's really important. Um, I will say I, I, I do disagree with the te- uh, removing the team aspect. I think this is uniquely the one time in the season where we actually do get to see players team up. And I think it provides some incentivization for them to want to team up with their friends or guys they have on the tour they enjoy being around. And I think by doing this, you give people a unique look that outside of this, you have six months of people playing singles. Like, let's give it a weekend of having a doubles format thrown in there while singles still exist on top of that. Very fair points. Uh, I, you know, I really respect you going into full M and M mode at the end there to make sure you got that point across. Like I said, I'm more lenient with the mute button than Trevor is, but hey, I respect the hustle. That was impressive. Uh, very impressive there. That was a struggle. All right, Mr. Dark Horse, your your turn. You have tomorrow. You're in charge. Changes. What was that? <laughs> is this terrible? Can, is it coming through my AirPods? Uh, yeah, it's coming through your AirPods. Yep. You're okay, good. So tomorrow, bad. no, you're fine. We are golden here. Tomorrow, you're in charge okay. of the 2025 All Star event. 
what are you changing? Canceling it. <laughs> <laughs> oh, is that it? <laughs> oh, um, okay. Well, if, I, if that's not an option, that can be an option. then I would, I would say you have to move. Thoughts, can you make me just audio and see if that's better? Because, I mean, th- this is not a good look for what we're about to witness this weekend because I'm literally right on the course and I have no service. Try, try just <laughs> audio. How's that? Am I coming through better? Perfect. You're great. We can hear you. Love it. I'm going to start driving to this Airbnb, which is, by the way, 45 minutes away. Um, so, yeah, if, if I can't cancel it, I'm moving the distance contest to the final event. That's the most interesting one. I think that they finish with putting, which is, like, the most boring of all the events. So, distance to the end. The other thing I'm probably doing, uh, which I think, who said it? Was it Dustin? I'm not having copyright music in the background of the video so it it doesn't get taken down on youtube so the music thing maybe bad idea and this might be a good time to do the manufacturer's cup you got to play for something and right now the teams aren't playing for anything i asked isaac and gannon today would you guys win they said nothing there's no incentive for them to play i'm gonna go a little over my time just to say this if you did a manufacturing cup and each manufacturer threw money in a, in the pocket and you, the winning team got all that cash, you would see a whole different atmosphere out here. That is a, that's a solid point. Whether or not that belongs to the all-star, I don't know. Um, I, I think, so the point that I think I agreed with the most out of all of this, I think everyone brought good points. The general vibe was let's spice things up a little bit. Let's add, you know, more different, if you want to call them gimmicks to the different skills competition. I think that's great. You know, adding lights, adding copyright free music, um, getting people closer to the tee pads, all of that stuff. Um, but Brody R's point of make it mid season. I think that's crucial to fan engagement because by the time the all-star event comes around, we're looking at last year's stars that we've kind of forgotten a lot of the storylines. So I think that is a, a very good point that should be looked at. Hopefully the Disc Golf Pro Tour is already considering it. Um, now, a big announcement that came out last week talking of the Pro Tour was Disc Golf Network has farther committed to their subscription model with a new three-tiered system with the most expensive coming in at $20 a month. $20 a month. Um, do you think that this is the model they should be using for live coverage going forward? We're, Gosh, we're going to kick it off. Audio listeners, I'm sorry you're not getting to experience this picture of Brody when he What's was my happening? age. You're not see- <laughs> oh, you can't see it. We just have subbed you in with a uh, cardboard cutout of you. Um, Perfect. All right. Heck yeah. Looks so, Perfect. Back to the show. Do you think this is the model the DGN should be using for live coverage? Steven, we're going to start it off with you. Okay. Uh, very simply put, no, I don't think it's the model they should be using for live coverage, but there is more to it. Uh, there should be, a, and again, this is something that you touched on, but it's something that I truly believe. There should be a like a $5 public tier that allows access to every single event, every single round, so that you can try and engage the casual fan. Right now, the casual fan that's not a PG, PDGA member is priced out of the market. I'm not paying a $13 subscription if I'm not a PDGA member because I'm probably not that invested in the sport. I'll watch whatever post-produced is out and go on with my life. And I think that right now, it, it's just too soon. You need to draw in people. Use Jomez to create that hype around the sport but then make your live product that you want people to pay for something that is very nominal. And you're going to draw in a huge amount of viewers that you don't have currently because it's only five bucks a month. Very fair. Very fair. Making it more affordable um, is definitely one way to think about things here. We're going to go with Brody R. What's your thoughts on it? Okay. So I was like super skeptical about this at first, especially when I think of like a three tiered subscription system, just because like, I think level of tiers and subscription systems, especially for streaming can get kind of wonky anyways, but especially within disc golf, a kind of like niche sport. Um, but after reading more about it and they talk about how every single package has access to like their new video function, the 60 frames per second. I think they talked about how they have this upgraded, um, 
system that like leagues like Bundesliga and NFL use already to stream their content. I think adding that um, allows me to be okay with a three tiered system because at the very base, you're getting access to everything that a pro membership would get you. Um, I think beyond that, it matters how much of a fan you are of disc golf um, determines how, like, how further you go in the subscription system. Now, my one big beef I do have with it though, is that they are still putting the U S disc golf championship and the European events behind the paywall, or you gotta be a pro subscription for $20 a month. I think this is, I think this is crap. I think it's a terrible idea. I think you have some of the biggest events of the year in terms of like actual fan turnout, like the European open, like had like 5,000 people show up last year. That's huge for like European disc golf. Why not drag in other people outside of the market of European disc golf to watch that? Like, why would you, why would you put that behind the paywall outside of a, a, a program that you already, um, offer? And so I think that us digital golf championship in Europe still being outside of, um, a regular subscription that all of us would have access to on a lowest level is a really bad idea. And so I still struggle with that. I think that really isn't necessarily unique to a three tier subscription system because you has done this in the past. Um, but I think if you're going to update it to a three tiered system, then you better include the U S disc golf championship and the European events for other members than just your like platinum highest tier, um, events. I think it's super important that you keep that in mind. All right. Some fair points made there. We're going to, my button is not working. Okay. We're going to go on to, uh, I believe that is shoot. This is really throwing me off now. Dustin's next Dustin. No, I think it's Brody's next. To be honest with you. I want to be fair. Oh, Bro to be Brody's fair. Next. Okay. Dark horse, Mr. Dark horse himself, Brody. Oh, is it me? Okay. It is you. How am I doing now? I'm a little bit further away from the course. I, you're, I you're sound fine. better. We worse? can hear you. I think you sound better. I'm hearing more words. Oh, okay, cool. I'm farther away. So hopefully that keeps getting better and better as I get closer to civilization. Um, so the one real issue is everyone hates coverage. Like it, it, I don't know a sport that everyone is like, this is the best coverage ever. You're always going to get people complaining about when the graphics change. You're always going to get people complaining about the commentary. You're always going to get people complaining about missing shots or we didn't see a replay. That's across every sport. Now, the issue that the Disc Golf Network has is you're literally making this a pay-per-view thing. At least when it's like comes to a football game or uh, a soccer match or golf, I'm paying for like a bunch of different channels, a bunch of different stuff, and that's just a part of it. It's a lot different when I'm specifically playing what, which this is basically a subscription model. And then for the European Open USCGC, it's basically a pay per view. And when you do that, you're, you're setting yourself up for people to get really, really pissed off because now you're specifically paying for one thing. And if you're not getting the product, that you expect or the product that people are telling you they're going to provide, that's going to be a real issue. I don't know what my time's at. You got 20 seconds. Oh, okay, cool. Um, but here's the other issue too, is like, is the disc golf network trying to suck as much money out as possible? And is that wise or is it smart to make more content free and try to draw more people in? I don't know what the right move is. I never know what the right move is, but uh, that is the dilemma that they're in. Very fair points there. It is true. Most sports uh, people do just want to complain about coverage. Um, typically, coverage is when it's done right. It means that you have nothing to say. Uh, Dustin, what's your thoughts on all of it? You know, I think this question was some, some similar question to this the last time I was on debate night. Um, and last, that's, last time I said I didn't like it. In fact, I said they should probably blow it up and start over. And spoiler alert, I still feel the same way. I just do not like these paywalls. And I, they, now they've made it more complicated. They've made it more expensive. They've taken away stuff from the free viewers. And the question I have is there's cost. Okay, we talk about cost. How much does this thing cost? But how much value is it actually bringing anybody? How much value is it bringing the disc golf fan? How much value is it bringing to... Uh, somebody who's trying to discover disc golf for the first time. And so that's what I ask is how does this model help grow the sport? And I have no idea how this model helps grow the sport because I'm a fan. I've been watching for, you know, four years or so, and I'm paying money to go do this. I don't even have time to watch every round. I'm, I got a job. I got kids. I got other things I want to do. I actually want to play disc golf, not just watch it on TV. And so how am I supposed to squeeze this all in? I'm not getting three rounds fully. I'm not getting all four rounds. I'm getting, some of the rounds, maybe the last day. And it just seems like they're they're pushing you harder and harder to spend more money. And I feel like to me, it's pushing me further away from wanting to do it. But how does it grow the sport? How does it bring in the casual fan? I doesn't think it I don't think it does. The value's not there. There are 761 episodes of The Simpsons. 
That's 16,000 minutes, 279 hours, and 11 and a half days of content. And that's one thing on another streaming service that's cheaper than Disc Golf Network. Just don't think the value's there. Bringing the stats from The Simpsons, a very, but it's a solid point, though. You know, when, when you're talking, when you get the price up to that Netflix, to that Peacock, to that, that level, that's what the Disc Golf Network is now trying to compete with in people's wallets. So that is a very solid point. Steven, I believe you had a rebuttal you wanted to, to bring up. Not necessarily a rebuttal. It's just something that I for, forgot to mention, and I'm not necessarily looking for more points out of it. But I did want to bring up the idea that you know what Brody was saying is it the right move to be or to look to grow the fan base, or is it a right move to try and just get as much money as possible to try to become profitable? In my opinion, I I, I think that they should truly look at growing the sport because that's what everybody wants. I think all of us as fans agree that we want to see the sport grow as fans of, of watching good sports. You only get good sports when you have a giant fan base, you know, hockey, football, soccer, whatever it is. Those are only so exciting because of the fans in the stadium at the event. I mean, look at COVID when we had COVID and the stadiums were empty it was boring. It was boring to watch. And, and, and I think that you really truly need to grow that fan base. And one of the ways to do it would maybe be putting it on like one of those Bally sports network or a Peacock sports network or something, sell the rights to it and, and, and just go from there. Rebuttal. So in your opinion, Steven, Rebuttal. would it be better if it were free versus the paid, paid subscription model? <laughs> Uh, you're not muted, Brody, but you can rebuttal in a second. Hunter, um, I think that it would be better I can't, right now. I can't it, see anything. It would be better right now if it was free, in my opinion. But have a premium tier where you have, like, the extra streams, like the, the, the placement holes of, like, the camera placed on hole 17. You know, have those as paid options, but have the majority of being able to watch the rounds as free right now to grow the sport. Brody, your rebuttal. Go for it. Am I good? I hear you now. Okay. Yeah. I don't. I don't. I'm, I can't. I'm driving, so I can't see anyone. The phone's just setting down while I'm driving here. Um, so I don't know who said it, but someone was saying how uh, the sports and stuff with COVID and no one in the fans was um, was boring. Yes. Uh, that's false. It, it was maybe a little bit not as entertaining when you didn't have the crowd there. But college football, NFL, those still are very ex – those are very exciting regardless of whether or not uh, the crowd is crazy. And my point – who said that? No, Steven. I did. Steven did. <laughs> Steven, do you like – Steven, do you like Twilight? Ooh. No. <sighs> you don't not like Twilight? I'm a Harry Potter so, fan. So, so if, you went, if you went to a movie theater – that was packed with Twilight fans. All right. And it would be more they, exciting. 100%. And, and you, you would you would think it was exciting? You no, not I mean, more exciting. You would think it was exciting. Would it be exciting to you? Not more exciting. Would it be exciting? You just said you hated that movie. Yeah, no, I understand, but I'm a fan of sports. <laughs> <laughs> okay, two I, different no, things. My point is is disc golf is not exciting to a lot of people. So it doesn't matter if there's a bunch of people watching or not. It's not exciting. So it's the same thing as cornhole. If you, you throw, if you see, you throw a hundred thousand people in a stadium playing cornhole. Hey, you know what another sport is, Steven? Soccer. Soccer is not exciting. I don't like soccer, and a lot of people in America don't like soccer. Okay. I'm not a soccer fan, well, but I have like, exactly. Been to, it like doesn't matter. Something. It doesn't like matter how something. many people are watching it. At the end of the day, if someone's just painting, I don't care if there's a hundred thousand. All right, I have muted Brody because we were going in circles there. Uh, Steven, I'll let you have your rebuttal. All right, last thing I'll say is if you're watching somebody ace in disc golf, the ace is much more exciting. If you're watching it on ESPN Top 10, the ace hits and the crowd erupts. Don't tell me that that's not more exciting because it's not true. That. I'm not disagreeing with that. That's my point. <laughs> Unmute him straight to <laughs> mid-point. <laughs> Yeah. All right. No, no, well, there you have it. You know, your point, your point, my point was saying that there are some sports, regardless of what it is, are just not exciting to the general public. They okay. just aren't. Sure. So, so, so it doesn't matter base, if there's people there or not. The consensus of this argument, fan base makes a sport that's already exciting, more exciting. Sure. Uh, but a sport that someone is not interested in, it doesn't necessarily matter how many people care. 
making making a 30 foot putt will never be the same as someone uh catching a one-handed touchdown it just, you can't compete against that that is very fair that is it's a, just it is what it is a fair statement now throwing sure. an ace maybe uh against but, a one-handed but, touchdown that's thir- 30 foot putt i mean 30 foot putt is yeah. like that's like a, the C just parts and someone just walks into the end zone as a 30 foot putt basically. Um, but, but even, but even an ACE, even an ACE is still just like at the end of the day, it's, you're not going to grab a bunch of eyeballs. If that's, if, you, if now if, all, if everyone's acing all the time, now it's, now it's darts. Now you just became darts because everyone's mean? doing it. I, I'm okay. saying yes, if you, if you go, if you, do. if you, if you go the route that some people are saying, we need to make holes easier to ACE. Now you're turning more into darts or more into Only bowling. In that event. wasn't that wasn't Only what in the All Star. I don't think that point was made anywhere. Uh, <laughs> the other point that we no, just no, no. learned that, that's a point that is made though. People want to see more yeah. aces, and the problem okay. is if you make if you make it to where there's tons of aces all the time, it now makes his aces not as crazy. Agreed. That's that's my very point. Fair. All right, we're moving on. Uh, final sorry, point. It's very this, hard. I can't see anyone. I'm sorry. Final point from this argument is bigger fan base means aces will happen more likely. That's yes. what I just learned. Um, all yes. right. The next DGN update that we're going to talk through here, back on topic. Uh, DGN also decided this offseason to update the way that post-produced coverage is going to be handled. Um there is a whole slew of these. The one we're going to focus on here though, is the additional resources are now being dedicated to Jomez for them to tell the full story of the round and not just one card. Do you like or dislike these changes or the other changes that was made to the post-produced coverage in this? We're going to kick it off with Brody R. Okay. Uh, I have one question. When we start this for DJ and Jomez is what story are you telling by increasing the amount of, card coverage if it's story of the card are we just talking about more access to seeing like plays thrown the same way that it happens on dgn um if that's the case i'm not sure how much that does outside of someone that really only wants to follow the league card because that's who's playing the best that being said outside of that i think that post-produced coverage is one of the biggest reasons why disc golf grew as much as it did in the past four years or so i think uh, at least for me, it, you know, like I got into disc golf four years ago and Joe Mez is one of the first pieces of media I consumed disc golf related. And like, I still am today. And so I think that someone like their first time getting involved in disc golf outside of like playing it in terms of like consuming content, they're not going to go to DGN, right? DGN exists as someone who is probably already into disc golf, get access to that, get access to that. First thing they're going to see is most likely Joe Mez on YouTube. When that happens, um, I think it's really good that DGN is, is putting more investment or just more resources into Jomez because that means that somebody's new to disc golf is going to get like pretty much the whole kitchen sink thrown at them at this point with like disc golf. Like here's what we have to offer. Watch it. Please like it. That kind of thing. And so I think that keeps um, Jomez from being stale. I think Jomez is already doing a good job on this, but doing their kind of the, the, the pre-round kind of player focused profiles they do. That was a wonderful addition. And I hope they keep doing that. Um, I think it makes the game more personable, but if DGN and Jomez and their goal is to tell a bigger story within the car, then I would hope that that includes more player profiles or more backstory stuff than just the round itself. If it was just around the self, I would say that DGN has that handled, but if that's not the case and Jomez, they're doing the exact right thing they need to be doing. All right. Uh, Brody Smith, what do you think about this? Yeah. I mean, I think this was something that we all kind of expected with how last season went. It's very, very strange when you're watching Joe Mez and you're trying to see, you know, how the tournament played out. And then they have, I, I mean, I don't even know how they did it of where did they just like clip in, you know, like from MV, uh, MVP, would they just clip in Matty O at the end holding a trophy? And you're just like, wait, what the heck? He just won. <laughs> um, I don't, I don't know exactly how it, I know they do like check-ins. I've seen that happen a little bit, but with how many people won off of lead card last year or how many people kind of put themselves in contention. I mean, this was kind of a no brainer and something that definitely needed to happen for post-production to still kind of compete um, or, you know, be something that people will want to watch. Very fair. I definitely think that is what played into this decision probably the most. Um, but let's hear what Dustin has to say on this as well. All right, so as much as uh, I don't think changing the model for live coverage through the GGN, I don't think that grows the sport at all. I think these changes could actually help grow the sport quite a bit because I love what they're doing from the mindset of I don't think it's just going to be a highlight show. If it was just a highlight show, we're like, well, we're going to 
jump around and just see the highlights from today, I would not be interested. But it seems like they're truly desires to craft a story. And so if they're going to show us the lead card, but also bring in other aspects from the round and be able to pull in when somebody's making a run and add it to the show. And if somebody's playing terrible on that lead card, fade them out. I don't need to see every shot from them. I want to hear a good, good story. Boy. I think Big Sexy Barry, I think the three of them, if they're doing it again this year, I know I know they can't always do every tournament, but I think they can craft a story as pros out there who know what's going on and know what's on the field. I think they're going to make it entertaining. I think they're going to make it educational. It's going to be a really recap storytelling of the day previous event. We don't get spoiled on live TV, live sports, right? That's the saying. No spoilers in live sports, and I agree 100%. So when you're showing, some of these channels are just showing a recap of the the chase card or like the third card. I, if I know none of those guys are making a run to the end, I'm not watching it. Like, why am I going to spend 30, 40 minutes watching that when I know they're going to round up? Man, you may say it's just for the love of disc golf. Again, I'm prioritizing my time. I'd rather watch the winners. I'd rather watch the big plays. I'd rather go out and play myself than waste my time doing that stuff. So I'm a big fan of this because I truly believe it's going to help grow the sport and keep people engaged in the activity from day to day. Very solid points made there all around uh steven round out the topic here yeah it's uh all of my uh debate night competitors had a lot of points that i had one thing that wasn't mentioned that i'll jump into a little bit here before i round it out is um doing this actually eliminated the additional coverage teams of ace run and gk pro and i think that that's actually a good thing for the sport it eliminates some of the competition for views that jomez was having online not that anybody was really going and seeking out ace run and gk but jomez is truly the gateway to disc golf for the general sports fan people find disc golf through jomez pro and if their product can be even more entertaining than it already is and encapsulate more of the uh like dustin was saying the story of the round it can only be good for the growth of the sport let german yuli talk about the player movement through the different cards and have footage to go along with those things show some of the best shots from the round in addition to that that actually pertain to what happened in the end and the final score i, I think all of it was a welcome change it was truly needed and and ultimately it just it it's again, it can only be good for the sport. All right. It seems that most people are in agreement that this is a good move. Actually, I think everyone was in agreement that this was a good move. Um, and I'm on the same page. You know, I think that the tough pill for a lot of disc golf fans to swallow here is what Steven brought up, where for all intents and purposes, this is kind of the end of Gatekeeper and Ace Run Pro. I know Gatekeeper is going to be doing some chase card coverage with DG and cameras and stuff Skins. like that. Um, but if you can get the entire storyline on Jomez, what's the point of chase card coverage? And it begs the question of what's the point of chase card coverage really to begin with? Because a lot of times, like you watch Jomez first, and the only reason you were kind of going to chase card was to kind of see, like, oh, how did Matteo just win after I wasted my 30 minutes watching a lead card that wasn't going to win MVP? Um, and so, as much as you know, you have the one side of you want to see Gatekeeper and you want to see all these companies succeed, obviously, you want everyone to succeed. There's also like, well, what's best for the sport? And I have to agree. I think that that this move is a good move. I think it gets more disc golf in front of their, you know, biggest grow the sport uh, movement, if you will, opportunity that the disc golf network now has full control over. So, um, and it seemed like it was received relatively well. Obviously, you had some diehard fans that didn't like it, but I think overall, it's a good move forward. So, as we pivot into the first time we'll see this in action. The chess.com invitational is about to go down this upcoming weekend. Uh, as we head into it, I guess I should do a points update because I forgot to do that. And there are our audio listeners that are probably wondering, we're three topics into this, Hunter. Where is everyone sitting? Great question, you audio listener at home. We yeah, have I honestly can't see my score. Brody is one of the audio <laughs> listeners this week. Uh, we have <laughs> we have Dustin and Steven tied at the lead at 16 right now. Brody is in second at 15. And Brody R is in the rear at 14. Really, everyone's in this thing right now. Everyone's been making very solid points. This has been a tough show to host here so heading into the chess.com invitational this upcoming weekend who has the most pressure to perform right out the gates at this first event brody smith lead us off yeah this was an interesting question because it's like who actually has pressure like i don't i don't i don't know i don't really know it's like 
when, when it's talking about like an individual sport, like, is there really, I mean, I guess if we really want to talk about the people that have pressure are probably the people that are like living paycheck to paycheck in their vans. Those are the people that probably have the most pressure, right? Because it's like, if they come out and they don't play well, they don't cash, they're not going to be playing any more events. But I mean, what, I guess some, someone might say page peers, uh, you know, coming back from an injury, maybe that is like pressure to try to come back and be back to where she's able to somewhat compete with Kristen. I could see some people maybe say like Gannon Burr has pressure because Eagles left Simon's left MVP. And now he's kind of top man on the totem pole with Kyle Klein over there. But ultimately I don't really think there is any really pressure. I mean, I don't, I don't see how a player can really have pressure unless maybe some, some players are on the contract year and it's like, I, I want to play well so I can sign a big contract. There you have it. Brody Smith feels no pressure. That's why he's the competitor that he is. No pressure out there at all. Dustin, what do you think? You agree? No pressure. Everyone's just coming in ready to play. You know, it is a, it is a tough question because I agree with Brody. When you think about those players that are, you know, scraping by tournament to tournament, you know, I feel for those people and I'm sure those putts are stressful and those, you know, if they do anything like I do and hit a tree, you know, it's, it's a pain in the heart, you know, but when I think about this, I've went with the approach of whose legacy is, is most likely to be tarnished. And I, I'm going with Ricky Wasaki because, and the reason I am is because he's a great player. He does all these things, but he's at, a time when I even started doing disc golf four or five years ago, it was all Ricky. It was all Paul McBeth, and it was those two guys. And I know Ricky has cha- challenges with Lyme disease. I know Ricky, but he just, you know, he just changed and went back to dynamic and throwing trilogy again. He hasn't been winning like he has been. I know he had some injury last week, but I'm really thinking about his long-term legacy. Yeah, he's making money. He's living the high life. You see his Instagram, you follow him, you see what he's doing. He's having a good time. But for long-term legacy, this is supposed to be, to me, the years. If Paul's struggling with injuries or we're not really competing at the level he once was, you would think Ricky would step up and just own it and dominate it. And he's just not right now. Uh, he's he's high finishes, but he's not winning like you would think he was. And in Worlds, you think he needs more of those to add to his belt? I just think with as much as that big contract was, as much of the excitement is brought into the sport, he has the most to lose right now if he comes out of the gate slow and doesn't build that momentum through the rest of the season. Cause it just, I just think that's what he cares about. I mean, it's a big deal to be known as the greatest and he's, he's not showing it right now. Very great pick there. Very solid <laughs> points all around. Um, all right. We're going to throw it over to Steven. You're next year. So, uh, you know, I got flamed last year for not being able to pivot off of my picks, but I'm actually going to stand true to that and, and not, pivot off of my pick i i i would say if if she was at the event i'd say it'd be Kristen because of she you know everyone's expecting her to win following up her season um but she's not going to be there if it wasn't for paul's injury i'd say him coming back to a course that he owns he'd have the pressure but he's got the injury so no one's really expecting too much of him so i have to go with ricky i think dynamic discs in 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 my opinion they need that they need their star right now to shine the brightest on the tour and make that salary worthwhile as of right now out of the out of the big contracts he's the biggest bust even though he had you know, multiple wins last season. He what? won the Pro Tour Championship. I think that that contract is the biggest bust. He did not have a strong start last season. He started playing not until the Austin event, and then he DNF'd. He didn't play again until Music City Open. And so ultimately, he needs to start strong and do something for his sponsor at this point to really start marketing their discs and make his contract worthwhile. All Red right. bottle later. Hot take there. I was going to say, hot take from Steven. Is Ricky the biggest bust uh, as far as his contract goes? Something to think about. All right. Throwing it over, wrapping up the argument to Brody R. What do you got? Man, that's a, that, is the, that might be the hottest take I've heard in a while. Listen, I think the biggest point about this is the question itself is specific on the chess.com tournament. So, Dustin, when you bring up the argument of, like, legacy tarnishing, like, one tournament is in no way legacy tar- tarnishing. I'd rather focus on, like, what the tournament means for a specific player for the outcome of the season, right? Ricky and Paul are fine. Regardless of what happens for the rest of their career, they're legends. They have the world championships. They got paid. They sell discs. Like they're doing good for their companies. I'm not worried about them in terms of legacy tarnishing, especially when it comes to the very first tournament of the season, especially also coming off the injuries for both of them. 
Um, furthermore, I think the idea that Ricky is the biggest bus is also just like crazy to, to, to hear. Um, even if he's not playing at the highest level, um, there's no doubt that he has taken dynamic discs up about five notches in terms of like relativism. Yeah, money, exactly. Like that's the entire reason why um, I think people um, are able to be okay with Ricky, like not performing at the highest level. Um, in terms of how I do actually think has the biggest challenge or biggest pressure within it, um, aside from those looking paycheck to paycheck, as hard as that is, like, the media company it's got to be gannon burr man um coming off of a season where like for all like lack of a better term like a total pr disaster with prodigy um we finally could get to kind of see him work in a way that he's probably a lot less stressed with whatever's going on with his company and so on top of that he is now the new eagle mcmahon he is now the face of dismania he's he's the one you know he's the one that people are watching the most and he's the best player dismania has right now which means that for all intents and purposes in the context of dismania like Gannon's got to go out there and throw a good tournament to put himself on the map for the season because he has something to prove over that of Ricky and Paul who have already proven themselves. Can All I right. rebuttal that? Brody, yeah, Brody wants the... <laughs> that, 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 Brody Ricky Smith take, wants the that, Rick, that Ricky take is terrible. He he had 12 top t- he had twelve uh, top 10s last year. He won the Preserve. He won the Disc Golf Pro Tour. The year before, he won the Disc Golf Pro Tour Championship and won three other events, finishing with a lot of, uh, or four other events, excuse me. He won four other events, also had a bunch of other top tens. We're no longer in this world of where one person is just going to dominate. The fact that we saw what Calvin did last year, (coughs) that was insane. That's not the normal. What Kristen Tatar is doing now is what the MPO was years ago, where there just wasn't that many good people on tour. There's too many good people on tour. So this idea that like, oh, this person needs to win 10 times for them to not like lose their legacy. That's just, that's just a bunch of malarkey. Malarkey, so, great word. I, wait, wait, we got, we're going to go Steven first. Steven first. He was patiently waiting his turn here. Okay. So all I'm going to say is I, when I said it, I said specifically the big contracts, Simon, Paul, and Ricky are the ones that we know Eagle now too, if you want to count that, but he's had yet to prove that. Right. But those three contracts out of those three contracts, the million dollar contracts, who's the biggest bust in, in terms of sales. And, and it's just that sales are the driver. That's why manufacturers pay players, Simon and, and Paul, their worth is far beyond the million dollars a year that they get paid. Ricky. I'm not so sure. I don't know if he sells enough discs, to make his contract worth it, he's the biggest bust. Well, I mean, that's the other thing is you're you're literally going off of numbers that you don't know. But no one knows how many discs anyone sells. I I can assure you, Paul and Simon sell more discs than Ricky. Okay. <laughs> as a as a retailer, I would I would tend to agree. Uh, but obviously, yeah, but, that's just one that's just but, one retailer's point of view. Uh, there but, could be but, a dynamic disc super heavy you, retailer somewhere. You're also you also are just saying that like. You know the the player that finished fourth in points last year on the pro tour is a bust. Like I, I'm not this, saying he's it, a go- bust in general as a player. I'm saying out of those I, three, this people- is going. Are you the more exciting person too? Because it's the same <laughs> argument. You can't say if three people are t- some of the best players in the world, you can't say one's a bust. You can say he hasn't performed as well as the other two compared to yeah. them. He's not a bust. A bust is. I was almost, I almost dropped someone's name and that would have been really mean. And I oh, didn't man. do it. I oh, bit my hold, tongue. Way to so hold your close. tongue. I bit my tongue. Baby, I'm baiting. You know what? Let's go. There, Bonus point for there, Brody. there are people on tour that are clear bust where they got big contracts and they have done nothing. Sure. Those are busts. Ricky is not a bust. You can't say someone that has won the disc golf pro tour championship back to back years that has finished at the top of the points has, has been in contention at majors. You can't call that person a bust. He's not a bust. Best ever. I want to chime in because I want to say, because I picked Ricky too. And I don't, I don't agree with the word bust at all in any way, shape or form. But what I will say is the question was who's has the most pressure entering this season. And I think, I think I think nobody probably sits on his couch more than Ricky Wasaki wanting to be the greatest to ever play the game. And this is an opportunity to do it. So it may not even be pressure from the outsider. We're like, we're not big enough fans, but I guarantee you he puts a ton of pressure on himself to go out there because he wants to be known as the best ever. And he's just not there yet. And he's going to have a hard time getting it if he don't start strong this season. Very fair points all around the bust. You know, obviously that's a that's a hot button word. I think that maybe got Stevens take taken out of context a little bit. Um, but he but, said it. What are you talking about? 
<laughs> well, no, the bus, the bus was the wrong word. I understand what he was attempting to say. To as take far it out as of context. Out of, out of the top three, he's the one who's performed the, the worst out of those three. Bus, wrong word. Understood, though. Um, I, so we have a even perform the worst out of those three? Not perform, sales wise. He's have... talking sales. He's talking sales. Okay. Uh, okay. He's, okay. he's okay. talking sales wise. Um, now we have a tie between Brody R and Steven, and I am going to end up giving the push into the final to Brody R for one reason only. It's because I do think that Gannon Burr coming into this first event and into this season does have more pressure on him than Ricky simply because he is, he has bigger shoes to fill. We'll put it that way. He is stepping into the face of a company that was kind of left faceless this off season. And if he comes out and uh, craps the bed, then um, Discmania kind of has all their eggs into that basket right now. Whereas Dynamic, we know Ricky can perform and Ricky's doing what Ricky does, if that makes sense. He's so, a bust. So, so I'll, I'll just one, one last thing. The one last rebuttal for Steven here. The only reason I didn't say Ganon was because it's his first event with his new manufacturer. And I think a lot of people offer him a lot of leeway when it comes to that, like they do for most people. And so that's the only reason I didn't go Ganon. But congrats to Brody R on the, on the point and the, and the trip to the finals and your first event. Thank you, sir. Dustin Thank and you. Brody, good luck. There we go. All right, let's hop into the final topic here between Dustin and Brody R. All right, uh, we have a tie as far as the lead goes. Um, Dustin, you are the veteran here, so I'm going to let you choose. Do you want first crack at it, or do you want to go second on this one? No, I'll take second. Go ahead, Brody. Dustin's going to take second. All right, the final topic here, again, we're heading into a brand new season, the 2024 Disc Golf Pro Tour season. I want to know which player do you feel like is not being talked enough heading into the 2024 season and why? Brody, floor's yours. All right, before I get into the meat and potato of this, I really want to break down the actual question itself. And the most important part about this question is that who is not being talked about enough? So we can talk about underrated players or players that don't get their flowers, but I want to think about players who literally like do not see either the light of day or just so, don't get that much sorry, coverage sure, within the last oh. year or so. And I want to say specifically the number the number one person I think is not being talked about enough. And I'm gonna rep I'm gonna rep Kansas City hundred percent is gonna be Allie Smith out of Kansas City. Just this past off season, she signs with Infinite Discs. I was there when she made the announcement. It was super exciting. Um, got a lot of hype up within the Kansas City disc golf scene uh, for her. I was also fortunate enough to play around with her during the 2021 um, disc golf challenge before she went pro. So I got to be um, around her. She's a great person. She's a competitor. Um, she's driven. And these are all things that I see as a good quality of disc golfer. And her play 100% backs that up. And it frustrates me that it's not being talked about enough, especially because she is a, a, a essentially almost a breakout star within the FPO scene, seeing as she went pro within the last year or so. We're talking multiple top 10 finishes on the pro tour within the past year. Um, on top of that, uh, she's ranked like the top 20 right now on PDGA which is great. She won the Kansas City Wide Open, which was just promoted to an eight tier, I believe, last year. Um, so that's an eight tier one on the silver on a, uh, on a silver series level, um, which is great. Seventh place at Worlds, um, sixth place on the Tour Championship, and she just won the doubles tournament um, down at the All Star event. So. I think we have someone who has a ridiculous amount of, um, of potential going into this season. And I think in terms of like FPO goes right now, it's pages reemerges on the scene. It's being talked about a lot and Kristen Tatar's sheer dominance. And that will be dominate most of the FPO storylines as this season goes on with other players like Missy Gannon, um, and Kat Merch that are also like in the conversation of competitors every weekend. I wish that Allie Smith was talked about more, not only because I'm a bit biased because she's from Kansas city and I played with her and I think she's a great person, but also like, having watched her play in the pro tour and seeing how fast she has gone from an FA one player to a top line MP, uh, FPO player just shows that she is driven and shows that she is just like, she has everything necessary to be a good player. And I think she deserves her flowers. 100%. All right. Ali Smith is his choice there. Dustin, who do you think? You know, I had to spend a lot of time thinking about this and really who do I want to go with? There's so many people out there that's deserving. Ali Smith's a great choice. Kansas city, Great city. My wife's from Kansas City. Up there all the time. Got family there. Love the place. Hate the Chiefs. Said it. I'll take that. Um, but, you know, I'm a Bills fan, so it's okay. But I'm looking at this, and I'm trying to figure out who it is. And it's just, Again, great choice. But who – the competition in the FPO right now is not – to me, is not up to par to, to choose from the FPO. There's a lot of great players there. But there's a lot of open doors for people to walk through right now. To me, the player that's out there, it's not getting enough rep. I never go out into the course and see somebody pull out a disc and say, this is this is his disc, or they're not wearing his shirt that I see, and that's Kyle Klein. That dude is so good. 
He is so good, and he is young, and he's entering the prime of his career. And and we talked about him because Gannon Burr came in and became the new face of Discmania, and Alden Harris came in, and all these guys, and that's great. But he was kind of forgotten. We even talked about how they're like, oh, now it's it's it's, it's the youth movement. It's it's we're going to be um, having this new fresh beginning. We're going to have this new star. And Kyle Klein's been there, and he's been doing it year after year, and he's doing it so quietly and humbly. And the guy can go out there and do anything on the course. Finishing last year as number one, winning the USDGC and then coming in second to the Disc Golf Pro Tour Championship and then carrying that momentum into this year, people better be on the lookout for him. I, his his season may be better than Gannon's by the end of it. I think Gannon has probably more natural talent, but Kyle Klein's experience with this man and being there for a while is going to help him excel. He should be the face of that group. They should have promoted him right and left. And I think just heading into the season, he has all the skills, all the talent to, to carry it. But he's quiet. He's to himself. He doesn't have a great social media presence. So he doesn't get the fanfare that a lot of people do get. Uh, doesn't have the big contract. But that guy has more talent. He's like a little Calvin to me. He's 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 going to blossom into that same type of player and be able to carry that consistency just like Calvin does. And so Kyle Klein's my choice. Not enough people talking about him. Kyle Klein, phenomenal choice there. Um, so... You know, I think both of these were were great choices. I have my winner in head, but Brody, you you seem like you want to have a quick rebuttal. I'll let you have that. All right, I'll keep it as quick as possible. I think um, when it comes to weighing between two players, we were weighing between Allison and Kyle Klein. Uh, Kyle Klein has established himself on the scene. Uh, he has discs. I think that's I think that's one thing that's important to make a difference between Ali Smith and Kyle Klein. Kyle Klein has discs. Ali Smith does not. So that's already proof that Kyle Klein is probably being talked about more. On top of that, when they signed Gannon Burr, literally all the comments I could read was, we got new Crush Boys, right? We have a new Simon and Eagle. Like Kyle Klein and um, Gannon Burr are like literally the new Crush Boys, and that's how, they were, that's how they were advertised as. So you have a company that is heavily pushing these two guys as the two new faces of the company versus Ali Smith, who is fresh on a contract with Infinite Discs and is a year into the FPO field. Justin? Yeah, but I think the difference is, is to me, is not this mania didn't really put out that promotion until a lot of people started calling it for it. I heard it on foundation. I heard it on different places of like, what, what happened to Kyle? Where's Kyle? And then this mania started pushing those buttons and getting him out there more and more. And I also think Kyle Klein's been on the tour for several years now, being consistent and being good. And Allie Smith, you know, she's new, new word to the, to the, the pro tour. So I think as people learn who she is, she's going to get that credit. She's going to get talked about, but with Kyle Klein, he's been around and people know him and yet they're still not talking about him. Like he's not uh, one of the elites out there. And I think he very much is. I think that these were probably two of the better answers to this question. Uh, I am going to give the win to Dustin for one reason, one reason only, which, you know, you'd brought up Brody where Allie Smith doesn't have discs yet. She doesn't have the wins to have discs yet. Kyle Klein has proven himself for years. Every time you look at this dude's stats, the only reason I'm giving it to Dustin is I look at his stats and I forget every time how good this guy is because he's always living in someone's shadow. That's the big problem here. I think Allie Smith, she's in the shoes Kyle Klein was in a few years ago where I think she has the chance to break out and we don't know if she's going to be a player that has continued not to be talked about enough. Right now, it's like, what can this player be? Kyle Klein has proven it. Kyle Klein has been, frankly, one of the top two Discmania players for years, but he's been in Eagle Shadow. He's been in Simon and Eagle Shadow. And now this year, he just got thrown into Gannon Burr's shadow when it was his time to shine. So I got to go with Kyle Klein. I actually, I think I might agree with Dustin. It could definitely be Kyle Klein could have a better season than Gannon Burr when it's all said and done. I forgot I muted Brody. That's funny. Um, Brody's back <laughs> unmuted. But Dustin, congratulations. You have taken down debate night. The floor is yours. Your victory Ooh. lap. What do you have to say? Um, you know, y'all are here for history. This is my first ever win in anything disc golf related. So thank you guys. I appreciate it. <laughs> Glad we could be a part of it. Glad we could maybe be a one day I, Maybe one day I can do it on the uh, course. We'll see. There you go. I, I hate to tell you, debate night wins do not translate to the course. I've had a few. Oh. Has not translated yet. Yeah. Um, I'm already setting up a signing session in my local course uh, later this weekend. So if y'all want to come by. <laughs> Perfect. Way to capitalize on it. I love it. <laughs> All right. Well, great show, everyone. Uh, appreciate you all for tuning in. Appreciate all of you for being here and, uh, you know, providing insight on all these topics. We'll be back again next week talking about some storylines from the chess.com invitational and hopefully a few other interesting things that I'm sure will happen in the Disney 19 world. points.
<laughs> you had 19. What you didn't make heck? the finals. You didn't make the finals. <laughs> oh, my gosh. <laughs> you didn't make the finals. But that's going to wrap wow. it up for this week's show. Thank you all so much for tuning in. We'll talk to you next week.